of various techniques for analysis of event model. So there are different techniques. You all are familiar with techniques like production principles, you know, uh, case additional factor analysis, how we can do the laboratory. And uh, one by one, I will discuss about each of the technique principles, whatever applicable for the analysis of the patient body. So you must uh, might have heard the name of the Miller system of analysis, that is approximate system, approximate analysis of uh, feed and food. So a team of the scientists under the leadership of Enver and Stone, two German scientists, they developed approximate principal analysis system at Pindale Experimental Station in Germany. So they gave the name, uh, the principal in combination is proximate analysis. And proximate analysis contains six component, that is first is moisture, that means dry matter, content of feed and fodder, then as crude protein, ether extract, crude fiber and nitrogen free extract. So these six principles are coming under the proximate analysis or proximate principles in combination. So feed sample, first uh, when uh, we think about the analysis of the feed sample, then first we think about the dry matter examination. What should be the dry matter, what should be the organic matter. Organic matter means total as content of particular feed after burning and treated with the compressed CL and extracted as acid in soluble as part. That contains mineral. So the solution which contains mineral <coughs> and uh, acid in soluble as organic matter which is lost in the weight due to a single furnace that is total S. So um, crude protein can be estimated by the nitrogen content into 6.25 factor and the ether extract which is a portion of soluble in those portion which is soluble in petroleum ether. So by extracting the feed sample with the petroleum ether, the content left is ether extract of that particular sample. Carbohydrate like a nitrogen free extract or soluble sugar. So which can be estimated by it. not estimated in the laboratory, it is calculated by the different parameters. And crude fiber, which is the residue left after the ether extract, which is boiled with the weak acid and weak alkali, then the results come in the form of crude fiber. And uh, that sample will be dried, uh, the residue left uh, after the washing, the sample will be dried, ignited, and difference in weight results, crude fiber component of that particular feed. So moisture, uh, what is the significance and significance of moisture? Why we analyze the moisture content of dry matter? So water is one of the most important constituent of all plant and animal tissue as well. And uh, while determine, determining the moisture content by drying a feed sample in a hot air oven at 100 degrees centigrade or a specified length of the particular length of the time, that means 12 hours. And loss of weight, which is the moisture content of the sample. Finally, the weight loss is the moisture content of the sample. And the residue left after the removal of the moisture is dry matter content of that particular sample. So moisture content of heat, which varies consequently, and nutritive value of that particular heat is also depend on the moisture content of heat. And the significant, this moisture content is significant in calculating the cost per unit weight of the heat. So it is also very much important in case of the roughage, green roughages as well as the grains. So uh, cost will depend on the concentration of the moisture in that particular field. 
and classification of feed also which is based on the moisture content of the feed that is succulent and non succulent one and the moisture content which is significant in the storage quality of the feed so it also varies with the storage quality when the moisture is more then the storage quality is equal when moisture is less then the storage quality of that particular feed will be bad so now coming to the dry matter and dry matter which is defined as the constant weight and uh, the sample which attain when heated at 100 degrees centigrade in hot air oven and it may vary up to 105 degrees centigrade so 100 plus minus 2 degrees centigrade is almost we can calculate the dry matter content of the feed so dry matter which is calculated by the weight after drying to constant weight in an oven at 100 205 degrees centigrade However, molasses, milk sample, those sample which contain high amount of the water, or feed with a high moisture content, which is preferably dry by heating process, slow dry or slow increase of the temperature, that is 50 degree to 105 degree. So slowly increase the temperature for drying the high moisture content feed. particularly in case of hay grasses and silage which are usually pre dried at 60 to 70 degree centigrade and the root in a small cut sample at 70 to 80 degree centigrade as well while a starchy feed can stand 120 to 140 degree centigrade as well so in case of silage the losses of volatile component in oven drying takes place so this is a drawer so we cannot uh, uh, use uh, that hot air oven for long time in case of the dry matter uh, analysis of the silage so there are different way of the analysis of the dry matter content of the silage that is that method is toluene distillation so toluene distillation is used for silage dry matter estimation and toluene distillation uh, how we can perform the determination of the dry matter in silage by toluene distillation so dry matter in silage which is calculated from the volume of water which is removed by the distillation component in the presence of toluene so like that we can estimate the uh, dry matter content of the silage okay. and uh, that uh, titrimetric determination of the total acidity of that distillate which is used for Used to correct the measured volume of the distillate or the volume which is acquired by the volatile acid present in the silage feed. So the determination of the dry matter in silage feed can be performed by toluene distillation method. Dairy starch method is also one of the Method for estimation of the dry matter in case of the molasses. So method which was developed by Dr. Ali Karnal to estimate the moisture content in the molasses because molasses also having high amount of the water or moisture by disintegrating the carbohydrate moiety with the help of hydrochloric acid and which is completely extracting thereby bond water with the help of Child. So, two chemical which is required for estimation of the dry matter in case of molasses, and method is known as dairy search method, which was developed by India Rekarma. Next is crude protein. So, crude protein which is estimated by the general procedure, you all are aware of that. What is the general method? And you know the principle of the crude protein estimation. There are many methods which is digested by the heating in form. H2SO4. So, from the nitrogen-containing organic molecule that uh, the ammonium sulfate, which is formed, and the amount of ammonia which is estimated by distillation process. So, digestion, distillation, and titration. The three process which involves in estimation of the total nitrogen in the feed, 
and then the uh, after distillation the titrated uh, against the standard acid solution support how used and crude protein content or uh, crude protein percentage can be calculated by the nitrogen content of the feed into 6.25 factor in percentage next is a uh, crude fat uh, or ether extract this is also ether extract and the combination of sample uh, combination of the simple fat fatty acid ester compound fat neutral fat esterols different vitamins carotenes so this combination is present in the feed and that can be extracted by distillation or extraction of the with the petroleum ether so estimated by extraction with petroleum ether and the boiling point of that ether uh, petroleum ether is 42 it should be 40 to 60 degrees centigrade and uh, we can use uh, the substrate extractor for extracting the fat molecule how we can uh, analyze the carbohydrate component of the particular food that we eat that carbohydrate component that is two parts nfe and crude fat so nfe which is also known as soluble carbohydrate which consists of water soluble separate separate polysaccharide component of carbohydrate and the insoluble carbohydrate that is a crude fiber which is mainly polysaccharide in nature and in which their polysaccharide content is known as cellulose. Or the residue of a feed which is insoluble after successive boiling with the dilute acid and dilute alkali, which is known as crude. The residue left after successive boiling with dilute acid and dilute alkali is known as crude fiber component of that particular feed and which contains uh, besides cellulose a part of nitrogen also present in that particular that feed. So crude fiber which gives an indication of bulkiness of any kind of the feed. As uh, or total as uh, which uh, the residue from the burden of any value can be really centigrade, it's called as. And the organic matter which is calculated by deducting the as percentage from the dry matter. We can calculate the organic matter. And NAP, the formula of uh, nitrogen to extract uh, that is 100 minus moisture plus good protein plus ether extract plus good fiber plus total oils. By that way, we can calculate the NAP component of the carbon. Next is the advanced method of partitioning of fiber. How we can estimate uh, the fiber component? This is the alternate method of uh, estimation of partitioning of the fiber. And neutral detergent fiber, the method which is, which is utilized, the detergent which complex with the protein to render it soluble and utilizes chelated agent. That is, that chelated agent is known as PDT. And which is to remove the heavy metals and alkaline or contamination. So, PDT will be used in NDAS uh, solution and uh, the procedure which involves the separation of the dry matter into two fractions, high digest tool and low digest tool, by boiling a 0.5 to 1 gram sample of heat in NDAS solution, which contains 3% sodium lauryl sulfate and having the pH of around 7 for one hour, and after one hour, we can filter it. And uh, NDF, uh, which considerably higher lignin and uh, hemicellulose, which are included in the NDF fats. So, the crude protein content of the NDF is uh, neutral detergent insoluble crude that is NDICP, we can say. And NDF, uh, which can be equated with the cell wall content of the grass as well as cereals also. Next to NDF, that is acid detergent fiber, the procedure which is used for the determination of ADF, uh, uh, that is the lignin, which is in the, for example, and ADF procedure which is used as a preparatory steps, and it involves the boiling of one gram sample of feeding and acid detergent solution. 
one hour and after one hour we can filter the filter and the insoluble make up the ADF and the ADF minus ADF is equal to hemocell loads plus limited amount of the protein. ADL, what is ADL? Acid detergent lignin and permanganate lignin. So this is the this is to determine the amount of the lignin which is present in the ADL. Is further digested in 72% H2SO4 or three hours and filtered, filtered it. And the residue which is remaining after continuous washing and drying is weighed further and burned or acid. And the remaining acid approximate the silica content, while the loss in weight during acid approximate the lignin which is different as acid detergent or specifically we can say that acid in soluble So AIL also we can say that ADL. And alternative method for determining lignin which has advantages of certain materials which involves the oxidation of lignin of ADL with an excess of acetic acid buffer KMNO4 or potassium permanganate solution. So lignin which is determined uh, is referred to as permanganate lignin. Lignin which is determined by that method using potassium permanganate solution is known as permanganate lignin. And this method may be used to allow all the cutins, cutin and molecule which is present in many seed hulks. Otherwise, it would be measured as lignin. So, due to presence of cutin, we can prefer the permanent lignin method for estimation of lignin concentration in the body. <coughs> now, coming to the determination of true protein and non protein matter. So, insoluble protein which left by precipitation with a suitable precipitate, precipitating agent which is after filtering, the non-protein nitrogen is termed as true protein. So, true protein is true protein minus NPN. And NPN is calculated by the difference between the total true protein nitrogen and the value of precipitated true protein nitrogen. And the various precipitating agents which is commonly used are tungstic acid, TCA that is trichloroacetic acid, copper hydroxide, zinc, barium hydroxide. These are the precipitating agent or estimation of the true protein. How we can determine the free fatty acid in the feed samples? So free fatty acid which are extracted from the liquid of for example, by using extractor, extraction mixture or named Dolls extraction mixture which is in combination of heptane, isopropanol, and acetic acid in combination with 40 h 2 10 h 2 one ratio. So free fatty acid which forms a complex with the cubic ions when mixed with the copper reagent. And the colored complex which is formed with the copper is solved in chlorophyll and diphyl, diphyocarbonate, which is used as color developer in case of estimation or determination of the free fatty acids. Next um, analysis method is mineral estimation. And in mineral, one of the major mineral is calcium. So estimation of calcium by Talpatra method, where the solution which contains calcium, which is treated with ammonium of this layer, and all the calcium which is present in that particular solution is precipitated as calcium oxalate. So precipitate on treatment with the sulfuric acid, we can treat the precipitate with the sulfuric acid and dissolve the forming calcium sulfate with its free oxalic acids. And such oxalic acid is quantitatively, quantitatively estimated by titration. Again, a standard NYTN came in for solution. Uh, to arrive at the calcium content present in that particular solution. And one ml of inviting came in for solution is equal to two ml of the calcium. 
Now, coming to the estimation of the phosphorus, phosphorus which is present in the ice solution is precipitated by ammonium phosphomolybdate. And the precipitate is lost uh, again and again, feel free from acid and dissolve in a non excess uh, of the standard uh, uh, that you can in any of And the excess alkali, which is back titrated against the standard in between HCl. We arrive at the exact quantity of the standard in NaOH required. And one ml of standard in NaOH is by 2.147 milligram of phosphorus. There are other methods of estimation of the minerals by using atomic absorption spectrophotometry method or AAS, and it is a suitable quantity, a suitable quantity of sample which is required. Or to oxidize with the mixture of the acid like perchloric acid, sulfuric acid, and acid. That is, uh, <coughs> uh, in the ratio of 0.5 is to 1 is to 4. And the material which is brought into the solution is uh, triple glass distilled water. We always use for mineral analysis, we always use triple glass distilled water provide any contamination of the mineral in that particular water. And the test material uh, in the solution is derived through a nebulizer into a, a spray chamber of the AAS. How um, we can prepare a sample by the oxidation or digestion method or estimation of the minerals using AAS equipment and the procedure for oxidizing organic substances by using acid and oxidizing agent. Minerals which are solubilized without volatilization. So we should keep in mind minerals should not be uh, evaporated while digesting the samples. And combustion of the sample of feed for the PCC and water is carried out by the always using triple AC digestion method. And the procedure for feed and powder analysis that is take one to two gram for the sample in a glass vessel and water and uh, weigh the accurately and transfer into 100 ml general glass. Mashing the material with 2 ml water, add 2 ml of sulfuric acid and 2 glass beads to avoid the bumping of the particular mixture. I heat the mixture gently over an electric injection lens. Start from to this hall. And after cooling the glass, add 0.5 ml perchloric acid and 5 ml nitric acid. And again, heat till the dark brown color becomes faint. Again, cool it and again add 2.5 ml nitric acid and heat it again till the material changes to yellow or colorless. Ones. And at this stage, add five drops of perchloric acid again to the glass to ensure the removal of the last or any traces of the organic matter in that particular digested sample. So heat it again until uh, thick white fumes of perchloric acid disappears. And add a little amount of the water, uh, triple plus water, to a glass while still warm and to keep the solid salt as a solution for further analysis. <coughs> Flame photometer. Flame photometer uh, uh, is, is an instrument which is used in, in organic chemical analysis for determination of the concentration of certain minerals like sodium, potassium, calcium and lithium. So these four metals can be estimated by using flame photometer as well. And the principle of flame photometer is that when an alkali metal salt is drawn into a non-luminous flame. It will ionize, absorb energy from the flame and then emit light of a characteristic area. As the excited atom will fail to unexcited ground state. Till reach the unexcited ground state. And uh, uh, different elements uh, emission wavelength and color emitted. So, I'm using the sodium 
and then give a yellow color, potassium 766, give violet color, barium 554, lime green color, calcium 662, orange color, lithium 670, it will be red, red yellow. Now coming to the colorimetric method of the trace event analysis and uh, colorimetric analysis is a method of determining the concentration of chemical elements or the presence of the solution with the aids of a color. So color agent is used here. Yeah. And to develop the color for measuring in respect of photometry. And applicable to both for the compound and non-polymer compound may be used with the or without an intermediate stage. So color development, uh, re recording of the color development and the efficiency of the concentration of the element uh, or uh, compound gives color intensity. It will depend on the intensity of the color. In the estimation of the nutritional factors, how we can estimate it, the estimation of total phenolic compound, that uh, phenolic compound, which is widely available in the field and for the resources, and then it reacts with the following CA called reagent, FC reagent, at alkaline pH, which gives the absorption maximum at 725 nanometer. How we can estimate the simple phenolic compound or non dilute phenolics? So, for that purpose, and that estimation we can use PVPP, that is polyvinyl polypharyntope. It is a chemical and has a property to bind the tannin, but not the simple. So the tannin and extract containing tannin as well as the phenolic compound, which can be removed by the precipitation with the PVPP, and filtrate can be used for the estimation of non tannin Estimation of pure tannin, tannin compound, that is the pure tannin, which can be estimated by difference with a different method, that is by subtracting non tannin phenolic compound from the amount of the total phenolic compound in the sample. So, by difference, we can calculate the pure tannin compound. How we can estimate the condensed tannin which reacts with the ferric agent in presence of return of HCl reagent? And, uh, Color which is persistent and absorption uh, maximum is at high 50 nanometer. And uh, we can use the spectro uh, that uh, spectrophotometer for estimation of this phenolic compound. And how we can estimate the total tannin uh, by the volumetric method? So tannin can be estimated as parsitanic acid, parsitanic acid by titrating against chemical core in the presence of indigo carbon. We can estimate the myosin, myosin which is a toxic amino acid and uh, myosin is extractable in dilute HCl and it gives the color reaction with a perichloride reagent which can be measured at uh, high 35 nanometer. Estimation of non-star polysaccharide that non-structural non carbohydrate minus a starch and a sugar, which is equal to NSP. And the starch and sugar can be measured directly. Net fraction, which can be reasonably, reasonably calculated by the difference using two different formula. You can go through this slide and you just read out this formula how you can estimate the non starch for this effect. So, this is all about the class and uh